Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and I'm here at the beautiful Salutation Gardens in Kent to find out all about how to grow dahlias. Stephen Edney, head gardener at the Salutation, has grown dahlias all his life and his family grow dahlias professionally. So he's going to tell us everything you need to know so that you can have beautiful dahlias like the ones you see here. Now, which dahlias should you grow? Is it just a question of thinking, oh, I like that flower, or what else do you have to think about? Do you know, I've got to be honest, I think you should grow a dahlia just because you love the look of it, first and foremost. If you're thinking about wildlife, then the singles and the semi-doubles, anywhere where the eye is exposed to insects so they can come in and land and feed on the nectar, well, that's great for wildlife. But if you're looking to cut the flower, and use it in some way in the home, then the decorative types are much better for that. Which particular dahlias do you think are, are the best for cut flowers? So for me, the cactus types will always, I'll always have a soft spot for cactus dahlias because I think they cut really well. I think they look very good in a vase amongst other flowers because there's nothing quite like them. If you're looking for something a bit softer, then the informal decoratives uh, are probably the next best choice uh, for me but then the dinner plates of course dominate any arrangement you can almost just use them by themselves with a bit of foliage and and they're amazing just bask in their glory really because they're just so incredible uh, so I think the thing about the different you know there's 14 different flower types or styles of, of flower on, on dahlias um, and it's really only the singles that aren't very good for cutting uh, unfortunately, because they're so good as garden plants. If you're looking to cut them, it's any of the other flower types that then suit what, what you're trying to achieve. Can dahlias grow in pots? Yes, yeah, dahlias actually can be really successful in pots. Um, the bigger the dahlia, the bigger the pot. And a lot of that is not just because it's, it stops them from drying out quite so much, but also stability. If you're growing a big dahlia, you want a hefty pot so it doesn't keep toppling over in the wind. Uh, can dahlias be grown indoors? Oh, now that's an interesting question. I've never been asked before. <laughs> uh, as long as the light levels are really good. So conservatories um, would be not a house plant, no. I, the light level is just too low. And that brings you to the next question, which is can dahlias grow in shade or do they need full sun? And so some varieties are better at coping in the shade than others. So for instance I always try growing some dahlias each year in the shade, maybe just two or three varieties. This year I, I've picked on uh, Purple City and I've picked on one called Louise and one called Yellow Hammer. Yellow Hammer actually has su been surprisingly tolerant of the shade and the other two actually haven't done very well. So do dahlias need a lot of water? Um, if you're growing exhibition dahlias and you have to think about the flower size really, it's not so much about the plant, it's actually about the flower. It's a huge commitment on behalf of the plant to create a flower the size of a dinner plate. Uh, and so those sorts of dahlias require vast amounts of water really. Uh, the smaller the dahlias, the smaller the flowers. And so I find that the singles and the semi-doubles Dahlias under a metre tall or around a metre tall are often much more drought tolerant. And certainly here at Salutation, we're on a light, silty soil. We don't regularly water plants. I wait until plants are, are getting desperate for some water before I would water them. So it means that some of our dahlias do, do better than others and we have to pick the damper spots for the dahlias that like uh, plenty of moisture. And is that the same for fertiliser? Like all plants, if you, if you treat them very, very kindly and give them lots of food, they'll respond by putting on masses of growth and loads of flowers. I don't artificially fertilise any of my dahlias, and so perhaps my flowers are a little smaller or perhaps I have a few less of them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable at what many growers are prepared to do at the sacrifice of other environmental factors. So when do you plant dahlias out? Traditionally, it's always after the risk of frost has passed. And really, uh, here in southern England, that is second, third week of May, even as late as the beginning of June. Uh, lots of people don't begin to plant out until then. They're often 
growing them in pots already. They'd, they'd start them off in pots, so they are growing. So you're actually planting a pot plant that's full of foliage already. But they wouldn't risk putting them out into the garden until, well, down here it's the second week uh, of May, right up until perhaps the end of June you can plant dahlias. We chance our arm a little bit in some of our very sheltered corners and plant out as early as the middle of April. And a couple of times we've been caught out by that and we've had to fleece some of the dahlias to stop them getting frost. And how do you plant dahlias once you're planting them in the ground? Uh, I, I don't like to, to uh, add manures or enrich the hole that they're being planted into. So we just plant into hopefully a good garden soil that you already have, uh, perhaps if you haven't got a good garden soil, you'd think about soil improving before you reach the point where you'd be planting out dahlias. But we always water them in really well. We almost puddle them in to their holes. And because we're here on this eastern tip and we have this light silty soil, we actually plant into a slight hollow so that water sits in with the dahlia. Now, if you're on a heavier soil or a clay soil, you may want to do the exact opposite and actually plant them on a slight mound so the water runs away from the crown because it's all about either holding moisture or losing moisture uh, from around the new shoots forming in the tuber. Uh, but once we water heavily for that first time and then we mulch and then we leave them to get on with it and don't check on them again for at least another week or two. So you dig a hole the size of the roots that you've got of this pot plant. Yeah. You put the plant straight in and you give it a really good water, you add a layer of mulch around it, something like compost, well-rotted manure. Yeah, any, any garden compost, not multi-purpose compost that you buy from the garden centres. Uh, I often hear people saying about putting compost around plants as a mulch, and I worry that, that most gardeners would see that as, oh, I've got a bag of multi-purpose, maybe peat-based compost. Um, oh, I'll put that around my plants. Uh, that's something to avoid. It, it's you know, the, the organic garden compost, manure of some kind. How do you keep your dahlias over winter? So because we're on a light silty soil for us, we can actually very successfully overwinter our dahlias in the ground. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing that, have a little think about your soil through the winter. And do you have standing water that, that won't drain away very easily? Uh, or does it drain, you know, really quickly after, you know, heavy rain? If the answer is that it's draining really freely and that water doesn't sit on the surface of your soil, then I, I think it's always worth trying to leave some dahlias in because it's one of the things that puts people off about growing dahlias is that they worry that there's going to be a lot of lifting and moving and storing. And I always say to people, if they're prepared to take the risk, give it a try because Eight years out of ten, we have no problem whatsoever at leaving our dahlias in the ground. The heavier and colder the soil, the more risk you have of losing those dahlias. So if you're on a heavy, cold, wet clay soil, then you should lift the tuber. So we'll cut the foliage back first, actually, to a, just a couple of inches off the ground. Fork up the tuber, being careful not to damage the tubers, and then we'll gently dry them. Now, People do say about tipping their dahlias upside down so that uh, any liquid in the stems can drain uh, out and so it doesn't rot the tubers. Do you know, I've been growing dahlias for 25 years now and my experience has been that people tend to leave them just tipped upside down and then just forget about them somewhere, come back to them in the spring and all the new shoots that have formed are facing the wrong way when they go to turn the tuber the right way up to plant it. We actually only tip our dahlias upside down overnight uh, just to let any uh, actual, you know, real liquid, real water just sort of come out of the stems. But in terms of the kind of juice in the stems, that'll naturally just dry out during the winter. Then we turn them right way up. You can store them in crates or boxes. As long as there's a decent airflow, we actually use our old spent multi-purpose compost from plants that have died. It obviously, if they've died from anything that's a bit nasty, then we wouldn't be using that compost because you don't want to contaminate your tubers with anything. Uh, but you could use, uh, over the years we've used sand, we've used straw, and they need to be uh, in the dark and they want to be just frost free. So uh, they could go under a bench in a greenhouse and be covered. Uh, a cold greenhouse or they could go into a shed or a garage if you don't have a greenhouse 
and uh, and they'll be completely dormant and quite happy there all winter until you remove them in the spring and kickstart them into growth. And how do you deal with dahlias and slugs and snails? Oh, um, that's got to be the number one asked question uh, because uh, dahlias are absolute martyrs to slugs and snails. Um, do you know, I think the big picture is very important. Holistically, how you manage your garden, no matter how big or how small. Uh, and it's really important to make sure you're attracting wildlife into your garden and that the birds are helping to control populations of slugs and snails. It's not about eradication. Um, it's always about controlling populations to a tolerable level. So for us, what we can physically do is to surround the dahlias with sheep's wool and we also use the organic slug pellets. Now, the difference between the old slug pellets and the new ones is that the new slug pellets are uh, baited with a pheromone and they have ferric phosphate in them, so it's like an iron tablet to you or I. So it causes no harm to invertebrates or birds if they then pick up the mollusk uh, and eat it, won't do them any harm. But they do have to get wet to activate the pheromone. Whereas the old slug pellets, they always used to say, don't get them wet because uh, that lowers their effectiveness. So people are often coming to me saying, the new slug pellets aren't working. And I said, but did you put them down? If it didn't rain or get plenty of moisture, like a morning dew within 24 hours, water them so that it activates the pheromone, attracts the slugs and snails to them. Nothing is the silver bullet. You can't, so holistically, it's very much to do with the wider garden and, uh, and how you're managing it and encouraging wildlife into your garden to help control those population levels. Newts, frogs, hedgehogs, birds, all of these will be helping to control your population levels. What plants do dahlias grow well with? What would you plant with them in a border? Oh, well, of course, dahlias classically, they have that exotic look to them. So I always love combining them with cannas uh, and again, because if you're going to grow the larger decorative types or the dinner plates, they want very similar conditions and similar moisture levels. So um, often I think about plants as um, in combination as a, as a small community. And so I'd combine plants with other plants that like similar conditions. So I don't have to keep trying to give different plants different things. Uh, so exotics uh, are always high on my list to go with dahlias because I think they go together like peas and carrots. Um, miscanthus, I think they work really well with grasses um, just because I, I love the position that a dahlia plays, you know, with its incredible flamboyance against the subtlety of perhaps uh, a fine grass. Um, salvias, of course, because they're a late summer flowering plant and they're also what they call a short day plant. So as the days begin to shorten in length, the flowering intensifies and so if you pick plants which also have that same attribute, like salvias and like many of the miscanthus, then they create a combination together that really zings, rather than uh, thinking of them in isolation. And do you have any other advice for people thinking about growing dahlias? Um, yes, don't overwater them in the spring. Very often people will plant tubers, whether it be in a pot to start them off, or whether it be uh, planting the tuber straight into the ground. What people often do is water too much too early. The demand for water uh, for most plants doesn't come until the high summer. Imagine the plant, and you have to start thinking like a plant, um, it's not three inches tall, suddenly it's three feet tall, and all of the leaves are spread all over the plant, and the plant is trying to pump water to all of those leaves um, during the high summer, and it's at its hottest point. So save the watering, do more weeding early and water a little later in the summer. There are links in the description below to the Salutation Hotel and other resources. And if you've enjoyed this, please do hit like and then I'll know you'd like to hear more about growing individual plants in your garden. And if you have a middle sized garden or a small garden and you don't have enough time, you don't sometimes have enough expertise or you don't have enough money and you want it to look absolutely gorgeous, then subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel for tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.